First and foremost, I want to give all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahashem Yahweh Shai. This is the brother to walk. And today we're going to go into this prayer breakdown. All right. A very crucial point that Israel needs to take note of because as Israelites, we supposed to be praying, uh, praying every day, praying for, uh, uh, repentance, praying for, uh, uh, more faith. And this is just to help us to understand more about, uh, prayer. All right. So first of all, first and foremost, John fourteen fifteen through 16. All right. If you love me, keep my commandments and I will pray the father and he shall give you another comforter that he may abide with you forever. All right. So right here, Christ is praying who the world knows as Christ is praying uh, to the father that we would get the Holy Spirit, okay? After after he departs from us to go be with the Father, right? But that's if you keep the commandments, right? If you love me and keep my uh keep my commandments, and I will pray the Father, he shall give you another comforter, all right? To abide with us and to show us all things, right? John 15 and 7. If ye abide in me, and my words abide in you, ye shall ask what ye will, and it shall be done unto you. All right? So if we're doing those things that Christ taught, which is keeping the commandments, right, and having faith, then we would be able to pray for certain things and it would just automatically be granted unto us because we have so much uh faith in Christ, okay? And we have so much uh we're we're doing the works of uh that Christ told us to keep. All right. But that's if you do those things, if you actually are doing those things that he taught. All right, watch this in James 2 and 19. Thou believest that there is one God. Thou doest well, right? Because usually what Christians will say is that all you have to do is believe on, uh, believe on Jesus, right? And then you'll be saved, right? All those that uh, call upon the name of Jesus shall be saved, right? But there's another aspect to that. You got to... Yeah, you got to uh, know the name, understand uh, what he's done and have faith in him. But there's a whole other works part that goes along with that. All right. And if you don't have that works part along with the faith, then your prayers are basically null and void. All right. We're about to get into that right now. All right. Thou doest well. The devils also believe and tremble. So it's saying if you do no more than believe that uh, in the most high, then you're basically a devil. OK, because the devils do that same thing, but they're not doing the uh, the righteous works that go along with that. All right. First, John uh, two, four through six. He that saith, I know him, and keepeth not his commandments, is a liar, and the truth is not in him. All right? So if you're not keeping the commandments, but you're saying that you have faith in Christ, you're basically a liar. All right? And your prayers will not be heard. All right? Verse five, but whoso keepeth his word in him verily is the love of God perfected. Hereby know we that we are in him. He that saith he abide in me ought himself also so walk even as he walk. All right. So we're supposed to be walking as Christ walk. And what did Christ do? He kept the commandments. 
What do you, how should I do? Kept the commandments. Okay. Proverbs 28 and 9. He that turneth away his ear from hearing the law, even his prayer shall be an abomination. So there we go. If you refuse to hearken unto the laws of the Most High, if you refuse to hearken unto the the uh, the words of Christ, because in the laws in Deuteronomy 18, it tells us we have to listen to the words of Yahweh Shai that he was going to speak. So every word he spoke was law as well. And if you refuse to keep those things, then your prayer is an abomination. OK, you're not. You're praying in vain. Okay. That's for the uh the Old Testament only, the uh the people that don't believe in works. That's for anybody that doesn't meet up with the uh with this criteria, with this standard, okay? Uh Proverbs fifteen and twenty nine. Yahweh is far from the wicked, but he heareth the prayer of the righteous. All right. So he's if you're turning away your ear from hearing the laws, that's you're being a wicked person. OK, you're basically refusing to hear the laws of the Most High. So rendering you wicked, because how do you know what sin is? You know what sin is by the laws. And if you turn away your ear from hearing the laws, you're basically going to end up being a sinner. Okay. And breaking the laws of the Most High. And he's not going to give a damn about what you're praying to him about. Okay. Now, let's get to the words of Christ. Here's how he told us to pray. All right. Matthew 6, 5, and uh, through 7. And when thou prayest, thou shalt not be as the hypocrites are, for they love to pray standing in the synagogues and in the corners of the street, that they may be seen of men. Verily I say unto you, they have their reward. So when you pray, you're not supposed to be like these... Uh, these Muslim cats, right? That be out in the streets, uh, three times a day or, uh, or more, you know, they stop in the middle of whatever they're doing and just, uh, pray towards the East. We're not supposed to be, see, be, uh, Salakia, be trying to be seen of men while we pray. Okay. Not not in uh, big prayer circles, because when you go into that, that's that's a custom in the Christian church. But that's really going into a practice of witchcraft, right? Doing a uh, doing chants and stuff like that. All right. But yeah, we're not supposed to be praying to be seen of men. All right. Verse six. But thou, when thou prayest, enter into thy closet, and when thou hast shut thy door, pray to thy father, which is in secret, and thy father, which seeth thee in secret, shall reward thee openly. All right. So when we pray, we're supposed to do it in private. Basically, you don't necessarily have to enter into a closet, but what is exemplifying is the opposite of uh of being on a street corner, being seen of men is in the privacy of your own, uh, of your own space. You know, I mean, people, people make certain, you know, prayer closets and stuff, which is totally fine. But just saying like it, everybody doesn't have a closet that you could just go walk up into. Right. Some people have just small closets. So it's, is basically saying any place that's just in private. All right. Not to be seen of men and the father will reward you openly. But when you pray, use not vain repetition 
as the heathen do, for they think that they shall be heard for their much speaking. All right. So when you pray, don't repeat yourself a bunch of times. Don't go, oh, God, please, 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 please. Just give me this one thing. Do this one thing for me. So uh, so this and this might happen. All right. We're not supposed to we're not supposed to be uh, doing stuff like that. We're supposed to be having our prayers short and sweet, like uh, straight to the point. All right. Uh, James four and three. Ye ask and receive not because ye ask amiss that ye may consume it upon your lust. All right. That's another thing we're not supposed to be doing. We're not supposed to be praying for. For our own desires, our own lusts, right? Like, for example, a lot of people when they pray, uh, a lot of people, period, uh, not just, you know, Christian church, but in Israel as well, people pray for material things like I want, uh, Lord, if you give me this job or, or this, uh, car, I really want this new car. I really want a Lambo. Give me this, give me this record deal. Give me this, this and that. Okay. But we're not supposed to be praying for, for things that, as it says that ye may consume it upon your lust. Okay. But here's how we're supposed to be praying. Here's how uh, an example of what the righteous King Solomon prayed for. All right. This is first Kings three, verse seven. And now, O Yahweh, my power, thou hast made thy servant king instead of my of David, my father. And I am but a little child. I know not how to go out or come in. So uh, Solomon being made king uh, after after David's death, Solomon is being made king. Okay. And he doesn't know how to how to order himself to be a king, even though he's raised up by he was raised up by David. He still doesn't know the 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 ins and outs of being a king. All right. Verse eight. And thy servant is in the midst of thy people, which thou hast chosen a great people that that cannot be numbered nor counted for a multitude. All right. And here it comes. Here comes point. Verse nine. Give therefore thy servant an understanding heart to judge thy people that I may discern between good and bad for who is able to judge this thy so great a people. Uh, let me get the, I want to get the rest of that. It goes in more. Let me see. Salak here. But basically, yeah, so Solomon is praying instead of instead of for a material thing, he's praying for understanding to discern between good and evil to to basically better serve the most high. All right. Verse three was. It's a lot here. Okay, here. Verse 11. And God said unto him, Because thou hast asked this thing, and hast not asked thyself long life, neither hast asked for riches for thyself, nor hast asked uh, the life of thine enemies, but hast asked for thine self understanding to discern judgment. Behold, I have done according to thy words. Lo, I have given thee a wise and understanding heart 
So the Most High gave him that uh, wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. So that there was none like thee before thee, neither after thee shall any arise like unto thee. And then verse 13. And I have also given thee that which thou hast not asked for, both riches and honor, so that there shall not be any among the kings like unto thee all thy days. All right. So with that wisdom that Solomon got, he also got uh, riches and honor and everything else that he he could ever want. Okay. As a king. So that's the same attitude that we need to have. We need to be praying for understanding and wisdom because if I get this verse real quick, let's see. Salakia, Salakia. May not be able to find it in time, but basically it's saying that it's in the book of Sirach. It says that wisdom is a principal thing, therefore get wisdom. So wisdom is basically the foundation of all things. If you have wisdom, then you can get basically anything you want. Okay? But if it's got to be coming from that sincere place, like it was for Solomon. It was to discern from good and evil, all right, to to serve the Most High better, to serve the people better, all right? So that's the same attitude that we need to have uh, during prayer. And this is also something we need to be praying daily. Uh, Matthew 6, 8, and 15, all right? Verse 9, after this manner, therefore pray ye, O Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. So uh, praying for the kingdom to come and giving us that daily bread, which is that wisdom, knowledge, and understanding on a daily basis, okay, uh, constantly growing in this truth. And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thy kingdom come, and thy power. Slakia, for thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever. Amen. Alright. So, we need to be asking for repentance daily. Because all of us are still sinners, okay? Because we still sin daily because we're in the land of our captivity. Some things we're not able to look into or uh, or uh, execute properly because simply we're not in the land, all right? So we still have to constantly be asking for forgiveness. All right. Matthew 26 and 41. Watch and pray that ye enter not into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. All right. So we also need to be uh, praying for strength in our spirit, strength for our spirit to be over our flesh. All right. So we don't fall to the lust of the flesh, to that temptation that is going to come for you if you're in this truth regardless if you uh if you're new to it or not all right that's a constant battle you got so we need to be praying for a strength in that as well all right but that basically wraps it up for uh for this video I want to say call halal yahweh bahashim yahweh shai. 
and Shalom.